This is how I built this complete filtration and sanitation system for my DIY cold plunge. Check it out. Links to the exact product and fittings that I used are in the description below. You'll be using 3 quarter inch PVC, cement, primer, and Teflon tape. The water will be sanitized by this ozone generator and Venturi injector. And to filter the water, we'll be using this GE household filtration system. All right, that's basically everything we're going to use. So let's jump in here, lay this thing out, and get to it. Let's lay this out so we can get a feel for the project. Keep in mind that the water will need to flow in a specific direction through the filter. Fit the two male adapters in loosely, and then map out the rest of the project. Take another note that the Venturi injector will also have a flow direction for the water. Once you've identified that, loosely fit the female adapters on and put it in place. Water will flow into the unit, up to the T, then split, and the water will be filtered from debris at the bottom and sanitized with the ozone at the top. It'll then flow down back to that T and back into your plunge. Now, let's take some measurements so we can put this thing together. If you look in the fitting, you'll see a little line on the inside. That's what we'll need to measure to. So grab your tape measure and measure that out. This one and all the rest of these fittings come to three quarters of an inch. So we know that when we put two together, three quarters of an inch plus three quarters of an inch equals an inch and a half. We will need an inch and a half piece of PVC to connect every fitting except for the one that connects to the Venturi injector. Now grab your three quarter inch PVC tube and take your measurements. All right, now it's time to cut. So we've got our inch and a half pieces. Make sure you clean that out. Uh, there'll be debris from when you cut it. Uh, but now we're basically ready to start assembling this thing. So let's dig in. Use Teflon tape at every threaded PVC connection. Hold the fitting in your left hand and have the tape flow down as shown here. Holding everything like this just makes it easier to keep that tape tight. Starting at the edge of the fitting, wrap the Teflon tape around completely two to three times and then just rip the tape off. Flatten any loose strings the same direction that you wrap the tape. Now repeat for the other side. Let's attach our threaded female PVC fittings to the Venturi unit. Do this by hand tightening. You want them to be fairly tight, but be careful not to over tighten. And there we go. Everything's attached to the Venturi injector. Let's move on to the filter. You'll use the same technique to apply the tape to these next two fittings. Hold it in your right hand with the fitting in the left hand, wrap around two to three times, tie it off, and flatten it. And at this point, I realized I made a very critical mistake. I forgot to attach the wall bracket on there. So we're going to back up, redo it, attach this. Here we go. So let's speed through this. I used completely new tape and made sure to put the bracket in place before I hand tighten the fittings. Once I got the fittings hand tight, I used a wrench to turn one and a half more times. Time to slap together some PVC. So we're going to be using a purple primer and PVC cement. I'm going to start with, I think, the elbows and then kind of work strategically from there. Be very careful with this purple primer. It can stain really easily. I highly suggest um, using gloves, laying down some cardboard. If you're anything like me, you'll probably get this stuff somewhere you don't want it. So let's try that out and we'll dig in. For every fitting, we will need to coat both the fitting and the tubing with PVC primer and then PVC cement. Rule of thumb is about 30 times around for the primer or until the lettering starts to kind of wear off on the PVC. Then with the glue, go around five to 10 times, make sure it's nice and coated, and then twist and push it into place. You'll see it tries to pop out. You'll need to hold that for about 30 seconds to a minute to ensure that it stays. Then repeat this step so every elbow has a piece of PVC on one side. Next up, I'm going to attach the outside elbows together. I'm gonna to be using the table to kind of keep those things flat so they don't end up kind of veering off one way or another. I want both of those running straight across. So I'm gonna use the table as I glue this to kind of push down and make sure that those are both on the same plane. And we're back to prime, prime, glue, glue. Once everything's ready, push in, give it a twist, and then press flat onto the table to keep everything straight. After about 30 seconds, you're good to let go and repeat on the other side. And remember, prime, prime, 
glue, glue, insert, twist, and hold. Now I'll move on to the T on the outflow side of the filter. Same exact process, and again, I'm using the table to keep everything in line and flat. Looks pretty good. Okay, I hit a point where I wanted to pause and think. So the outlet side of the filtration system is all set up on one you know, plane. I used the, the table to get everything nice and flat there. That matches everything that I've seen online in terms of like pictures and stuff like that. On the inlet side, I've seen a few different variations. So the plunge kind of goes off at an angle and then they use this extra elbow to get the hose from the chiller into the filtration system and then it works its way through. After thinking through this and looking at my chiller and how I am going to feed this into the filtration system, essentially, I don't think I need this. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and basically go straight down in line with this side as well and pretty much be a mirror image of the other side. I think that'll be just fine. I can't think of a reason it wouldn't. If it ends up sucking, you guys will be the first to know. Um, but again, I think it'll be just fine. Let's dig in. And then just like that, I had another oopsie. So I screwed up. I was supposed to prime this piece of PVC and input it there. I grabbed a new piece and put it in the T thinking I'd go like that. That was the wrong move. Um, so what I'm going to do is attach this T into the inlet side of the filter itself as an adjustment. And then the only thing that I'll have to worry about is trying to get this side, whoops, this side somewhat straight. Mistakes happen, we just, we move on, you know? Oh, like I said before, I'm kind of changing the blueprint that the plunge uses and I'm going to go down with the hose. Okay, so that's set up. Now I'm gonna chuck this guy on there like it was supposed to be the first time. Twist, make sure it doesn't pop back out. And then just hold. So I eyeballed this to be as straight as I could. You're going to have a little bit of flexibility in the, in the flex PVC, which is nice. Um, but at the end of the day, if it's straight-ish, you're good to go. And last up, I'm gonna do the same thing I just did there on this side. All the way in there nice and tight, and then eyeballing as best we can to have that be straight all the way across. But again, we have a little bit of wiggle room with that flexible PVC. Okay, now we have a filter with essentially kind of some horns sticking out the top. Now we need to do some math. Let's figure out how much flexible PVC we need to connect the Venturi injector into the filtration system. We know that to fit these two fittings together, we need an inch and a half worth of PVC, three quarters plus three quarters. Then take your measuring tape and measure the distance between the other two fittings. That in this case is four and a half inches. And of course, when we include the inside of each fitting, we'll need another inch and a half worth of PVC. The grand total is seven and a half inches. All right, so seven and a half inches of flexible PVC. I eyeballed it to cut it in half. I've got one side that's a little bit shorter. That's okay. Let's prime and cement these together. The goal here is to have flexible PVC coming out of each side of the Venturi injector. So despite my two little hiccups that I had in the assembly of this unit, this next part is the most critical thing that you wanna make sure you get right. And of course, I am talking about the direction of the water flow. We need to make sure that we match the in and the out and have water flowing the same direction through the filter as we do through the ozone. So find your flow marker and plan accordingly. After priming and cementing the tubing and the fittings, triple and quadruple check that your flow is going the right direction. Then insert the tubing into the fitting on one side. Once that's in, you might have to muscle the other side in, but it should slide in once you get it in place. This is probably the trickiest or most finicky part of the process. After that, give it a little twist and make sure you hold for another 30 seconds and you're good to go. After holding for 30 seconds, you can twist the bottom of the filter back on. So there you go, guys. You, you did it. You have your very own DIY state-of-the-art water filtration and sanitation system for your DIY cold plunge. What's left from here is to attach your ozone filter 
uh, or ozone generators, excuse me, to the unit. And basically all that is, is putting the hose on there and attaching the hose on your unit there. Then of course it would be hooking it up to your actual cold plunge. Personally, I'm using the flexible PVC tubing and I will cement and glue that in on the inlet side. It'll go through sanitation. Same type of hosing will be on the other side. It'll filter back into the tub. So if you've learned anything or gotten any value out of this video, please leave a like, I'd greatly appreciate it. I have a Facebook group dedicated to helping people build their the best DIY cold plunge they can in their own home. Um, so if you're interested in that, join our community. I also have TikTok, Instagram, links to all that stuff are below. So get out there, build one of these for yourself, but most importantly, have a great day.